Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy and today we're going to talk about Transformers. Yes, uh, I know we used to do a Transformer show on this channel. We've done a couple of Transformer shows on this channel and then I actually took a lot of them down uh, because I got freaked out by the COPPA rules and everything. So I took a lot of that stuff down and now I'm kind of regretting it because obviously I am a big Transformer fan and I did promise though that I would still cover Transformers content uh, from time to time uh, and I would do it here on the Seek and Destroy show. So thank you for those of you who do like when I cover Transformers. Transformers and, uh, and have been so patient. Thank you so much. I will try to do more updates as this movie gets closer to coming out because this is the new seventh installment of the Transformers film franchise and this has uh, now been revealed to be called Transformers Rise of the Beasts and obviously that infers a lot of things from Transformer lore and we're going to get into that here because I have a couple articles up. Uh, mainly one I'm using is USA Today so I'll put a link to that down below if you want to check out the full article. But this is a seventh Transformer movie but this is only really based in the current Bumblebee universe so apparently this is going to take place a few years after Bumblebee and it's going to be based in the year 1994 in Brooklyn New York the rise of the beast will also bring back fan favorites Optimus Prime and Bumblebee but the more focused will be, will be on Optimus Prime this time. Bumblebee will still be in the movie, but it's not going to be his story. We already got his story in the Bumblebee film, and that is this, like I said, this movie's kind of building off of that. And apparently there's a CGI Transformer movie set on Cybertron, which is also set in this universe, and that's a prequel, all you know, all about Cybertron, and that's going to come out a year after this movie in 2023. So Stephen Cable Jr., who is the director of this film, um, and Lorenzo de Bonaventura, who has produced all the other Transformer movies, uh, they got together. They had a big virtual event on Tuesday to mark the beginning of the production, and uh, and they released you know information about the movie and when it was coming out. And like I said, it's going to be coming out a year from today. So it's based in Brooklyn, 1994. Transformers: Rise of the Beast. It's going to feature new human characters uh, in the height star Anthony Ramos you know that movie just came out recently so Anthony Ramos is going to be the star of the film or one of them and then we also have Dominique Fishback who was in the Judas and the Black Messiah which is awesome if you haven't watched that yet actually that's a really good movie I dug that I haven't seen it in the heights yet um, but Judas and the Black Messiah was really great there's some quotes here from Capel Jr. saying there are different breeds of Transformers. So we're going to prepare for the Maximals, which are creature-like descendants of the world-protecting Autobots, and Predacons, which are descendants of the evil Decepticons. And we're going to introduce a new villain to the movie universe, which is the Terrorcons. So if you've ever read you know, any of the comics or if you've seen any of the old cartoons, you know who the Terrorcons are. You know who the Maximals are if you were a fan of Beast Wars in the early 90s, um, which is, you know, this movie set in the early 90s. So maybe that was one of the reasons they were like, hey, that's when the uh, Beast Wars came out. But again, they're going to do that thing where they tie, you know, our history into the Transformer lore. And I always got old. That got so old after like the second movie. Like the second movie was like, all right, pyramids, that's connected to the Transformers. And then the third movie was like, all right, now the moon landing was connected to the Transformers. And the fourth one was like, uh, dinosaurs are connected to the Transformers. And then the fifth one was like, King Arthur was in Merlin were connected to the Transformers. And now the Incans and the, and the uh, Machu Picchu and all that stuff, like, and the Incan Empire, like all that's going to tie in somehow. So that part feels feels like a De Bonaventura thing where those producers are like, we got to have this in it because that's a staple of the other movies. But Bumblebee didn't have that. And that's what I liked about Bumblebee was that they took all that horse shit out um, because it, it makes human, you know, it makes all the stuff that we've accomplished feel cheaper uh, knowing that the Transformers helped us build pyramids and the Transformers helped us land on the moon or what's the reason we landed on the moon like it just makes every every achievement humanity's had it feels like less of an achievement every time they do this and just takes away from our our actual achievements um, I know it's fictional and you're supposed to just kind of have fun with it uh, but still to me I'm just like knock that shit off man uh, I really don't I don't get into that too much um, so yeah but anyway obviously it's always Autobots and Decepticons but in this movie, we're going to bring in the Maximals, or at least a couple of them, and Predacons and Terracons. Now, a Terracon is going to be the main villain of the movie, and we're going to get into that here in a second uh, from another article, because they don't really announce all that stuff in this article. But we're going to talk about the robots that are in this movie, and we're going to talk about uh, you know what they turn into and on all that stuff. But I'm very glad that it is going to focus on Optimus and kind of his connection to humanity, and I hope it... I don't know how they're going to do that. You know, who knows? Maybe he was Optimus Primal way back when and then got sent back to Cybertron and now he's back. I don't know how they're going to do that. Um, but apparently this is going to be more of an Optimus story. 
I've been wanting that. I've been saying for like the last five movies, you know, six movies, I'm, I'm like, tell the Orion Pax transforming, you know, becoming Optimus story. Like that's such a great story. Orion Pax is just like a dock worker on Cybertron. He's just like this lowly robot that's like no bigger than Bumblebee or a little bit bigger than Bumblebee. And he has uh, Ariel with him. And, and, and you know, they and, and I can't remember his friend uh, who starts with a D, um, but they like the three of them are like working this warehouse together on the docks or whatever. And they and eventually they get bombed by the uh, December Decepticons and tricked by the Decepticons and then get rebuilt. And that's when Orion Pax becomes Optimus Prime. And I just think that's a cool story that you can tell. But uh, but I don't so I don't know. I don't know if they'll do that. But they did announce that Peter Cullen, who's voiced Optimus Prime since the beginning, is going to be coming back to play Optimus Prime, which I'm excited for because I mean, come on, he's the best. He's the only Optimus Prime. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, everybody else, but he ruined that role for all of you. Like, you know, other people have tried and they've done okay jobs as Optimus and good alternate versions of Optimus, but no one's better than Peter Cullen. And I think all, every actor will agree with that for sure. Um, but we do have, like, you know, Bumblebee's going to get a little bit of a new look. Uh, we have Optimus who's going to get a little bit of a new look, uh, but that's, I'm fine with that. That's totally cool. Like we have Mirage, who's going to be in this movie. Um, Mirage is going to be uh, turned into a Porsche 911. And now Mirage is a character you've probably heard me talk about in those episodes that are now deleted, unfortunately. But I'm a big fan of Mirage. I always liked his power that he can like, you know, uh, kind of become invisible. He can blend in, camouflage. And I always thought that was a cool thing that you could utilize. And I'm so glad that Mirage is going to be in this movie and he's going to transform into a Porsche 911. Um, but they also mentioned that he might transform into multiple things in this movie so that'll be pretty cool i would love to see him turn into his formula one racer i thought that was a really good look and it's different than the other transformers we've seen in the other movies so hopefully he moves from a porsche to a you know like some kind of f1 that would be really great we'll also get to see rc in this movie who i'm a big fan of from the the comic books and from the old cartoon and she'll be turning into a ducati 916 so yeah and i get apparently the director he said he saw her in the opening of bumblebee and he was like, oh, I want to see more of that character. And then they were like, oh, that's RC. And he's like, all right, let's bring RC in. So that's cool. I'm, I'm very excited to see RC. And then obviously we have Optimus Prime and Bumblebee, uh, who will be kind of rounding out the Autobots. But then we're going to also introduce the uh, Maximals. And this is going to be uh, the, uh, you know, I guess the ancient Autobots in a way. And they're kind of descendants of some kind of the Cybertronian Autobot clan. And uh, and so Optimus Primal is kind of their leader or father figure of the group. Um, and he's kind of philosophical. He has philosophical conversations with Optimus Prime apparently in the movie. Uh, apparently they're on the same plane. So that's going to be really interesting if uh, Optimus Primal was a different entity than Optimus Prime. If he's like like one of the first Primes in a way, and then it's like, you know, now Optimus Prime or Orion Pax is the newest Optimus. Um, that could be kind of neat. I, I, I would not be against that if they make them two different entities, because I don't know how you're going to make them the same. Uh, but I don't know. Then again, some of these movies get kind of dumb at times. So we'll, we'll I, I won't hold anything past them or put anything past them. But um, we're also going to get Rhinox, which is really cool. Rhinox is like kind of the muscle of the group in the, uh, the Beast Wars cartoon. So he is kind of like that in this. You know, they basically sum him up as he wants to use the horn that he has he wants to ram stuff and uh, they think he'll be a fan favorite and then there's also air razor who is described as the heart of the maximals and air razor is a robot hawk with a rustic look as in has literal rust on it so i'm really interested to see how they're going to pull off like an ancient technology transformer you know someone who's been around since the you know early age of man um, i'm really curious about that um, and then last, let's talk about the villains real quick. The Terracons, or the zombie robot villains, as this article puts them. We have Nightbird, who is another female Transformer. Uh, I'm a big fan of because she's black and purple, and those colors look great together. Uh, she's going to turn into a Nissan GTR, uh, and she'll be a, one of the Terracons. So uh, she'll, be have, she'll have a customized spoiler and bumper, and she carries a sword. Um, and then the main villain of the film, so we're going to have some Autobots and Decepticons early on, but they don't mention Megatron, they don't mention Starscream, they don't mention any of them. So I'm wondering if it starts off with them, you know, taking down one or two low-level Decepticons that have come to Earth to look for Autobots. And then before the rest of, like, before Megatron and everyone else get there, the Terrorcons show up just yeah, by happenstance or something. Like, that'd be really interesting to see that their, their war between Autobots and Decepticons gets disrupted by something that's kind of worse than both. Um, so we have Scourge, who is the main villain of the film. And Scourge, uh, I think there was like a Robot in Disguise version where he was a Terrorcon and he was um, kind of like a 
almost like a bounty hunter, like a like what's the the villain from um, the fourth Transformer movie? Oh, what was his name? Oh, Lo- a Lockdown. Yeah. So Lockdown was kind of like a bounty hunter type thing, and he was like a third party. He wasn't uh, Autobot or Decepticon. But Scourge is kind of like that, but he's a Terracon, and apparently he has a giant claw for a left hand, a charcoal black body with glowing molten orange innards, and plumes of black smoke coming from exhaust pipes on his shoulders. And apparently when he kills uh, like another robot, he uh, like absorbs or takes their si- sin- uh, sigil or signal or whatever, like you know their, their crest of some, you know whatever they have, like Autobot, Decepticon, he steals some kind of essence from them and can, I guess, merge it into himself. So he's almost like... Uh, you know, someone who can absorb powers, almost like a rogue from the X-Men, maybe. Um, that'd be interesting because that would be neat to see him take uh, to kill Mirage and steal Mirage's cloaking ability. And then it would make Scourge even more of a threat in the movie if he's invisible for a point. Um, so that that could be really neat. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued by Scourge being a villain and then not, you know, them not going right to Megatron again. I'm, I'm kind of glad for that. There's my big Transformer episode for all this news because there's so much news here, but hopefully I went over it as clearly as I could with some cool visuals. And if you have any information that you want to share down below, something I didn't cover or something you want more clarity on or whatever, or you just want to share your opinion about something, please do comment down below and we can continue our conversation down there as always. Thank you so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you on Cybertron. Peace.